Hey guys, what's going on? GMs here back with the income journey. And in today's video, we've got an interview with Jasper Peterson, and we're going to go through his niche sites and his niche site journey. So he's been running a few websites now, I think. Um, and he's gone from pretty much zero traffic to over 250,000 page views a month. Uh, so we're going to go in, dive in, see how he did it, talk about his journey, how much he's been making and all of that fun stuff with ads and I believe Amazon affiliate. Uh, possibly some other affiliate programs. We'll jump into that in the interview, but let's just go ahead and jump in here. Uh, and yeah, if you just want to give us a little bit of background, Jasper, on you know kind of how you started uh, and where you've kind of got to in the past couple of years, I believe about two years. Yeah, yeah, sure. So my name is Jasper. Jasper. Um, I'm 21 years old right now, nearly uh, 22 in a few months, and I've been blogging for a little over two and a half years now. And in, those, in that time, I built up one uh, pretty big website. That's the one that did almost 250,000 page views per month. And currently, I'm really looking to grow this into a big portfolio of websites. So not just have one large one, but have multiple ones. Awesome. So right now, you, that's your, your main big website. And I think from watching your videos is you, you kind of scale that up massively. And then just recently, it kind of hit a little bit of a dip. And mm -hmm. so how many sites in total do you have? Because I know you're trying at the minute to diversify out a little bit and make sure the revenue is coming in from a few more angles. Yeah. yeah, so currently I have five websites and two of them are still in the stages that they don't make any money. And the other two of them are in Dutch, which I basically started to experiment because uh, when Dutch, there's so much less uh, competition. So I just wanted to figure yeah. out if it's even worth it to go after. Because yeah, the competition could be lower, but if there's no search volume, then it's no use. Yeah. So right now I basically have the, my one large English website that's bringing in uh, probably 95% of the revenue. And then the two Dutch sites bringing a little bit of ad income. Okay, cool. So on the, I, I think it's interesting the transition over to the Dutch, I believe they're in a similar niche. I think you're, you're open yeah. with roughly what your yeah. niche is in, do you mind saying? Um, yeah, so I can't really share the exact niche, but I always use some broader terms. So my main English website is in the beauty niche, a yep. certain sub niche within that, uh, in the beauty niche. And my very first Dutch website was basically the Dutch version of my English beauty site. So I just took some of the largest keywords or the best uh, performing posts and I uh, didn't exactly translate them. I just rewrote them in Dutch. Okay. So you, you <clears throat> wrote pretty much all of your content at the start you didn't outsource any of this this was essentially going from no. you really because i know watching a couple of your videos you said COVID hit and you just that's when you really started to to go hard and i'm pushing the content but yeah i think true. going back two years how many posts like in that first month second month how many sort of posts were you creating you know per month or per day um yeah it really varied so i started my main site in december of 2018 and uh, somewhere halfway along uh, December. And that month I published, I believe, seven articles. Yep. And the next month in January, I only did two. And in February, I believe I did somewhere around 22. So it's it's really varying. But yeah, on average, I'd say around nine to 10, maybe 11 articles per month okay. uh, until uh, COVID hit. And then I really started to scale up. There wasn't really much to do. So why not uh, double down on the business? So at that stage, were you writing like one per day or? Yeah, in March, I had a total of 35 articles. So that's a little more than one a day. Damn, uh, that's... that's still my personal best. Uh, although last month I did uh, break my word count record. So in March of 2020, I did 110,000 words uh, all my own. And uh, last month I did 120,000 words. Well, that's that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's, yeah, that's a lot of writing for for one man. <laughs> yeah, so but you're that, right. the, the one hundred and twenty thousand was with the help of two writers. Okay, nice. Yeah. So whenever you're you're writing these posts, that's <clears throat> quite big posts. You're doing are they like two thousand, three thousand words, or quite detailed? <clears throat> yeah. So I uh, I follow the income school method method for most of my sites. Um, it's what uh, got me started, and it has proven to me that it works. So. Uh, they used to have a uh, like three sort of different posts, uh, the smaller response post types, which are around 1,250 words, the staple posts around 2,500 words, and the pillar posts for 3,500 words. Okay. Just a few weeks or a week ago, um, they changed this up and took away the pillars and moved to response and staple only. 
Okay. But uh, yeah, so I have a healthy mix of most of them. I currently have just under 400 articles on the main website. Nice. And are they, uh, is it mainly like review content you're writing? Is it like best yeah. X so for, for this y? niche, basically the main thing you can write about or the main thing that is getting searched is actually best X for Y. Okay. Which is also why I believe I got hit by the December core update. Yeah. Yeah. So in a December, I think it was halfway through, you kind of got hit. You were going for it. You thought yeah, it was going to be your best 9th, month. Yeah. And then, okay. So that just fell off a cliff. One day you wake up. Your uh, it was insane. Yeah. Yeah. It was such a sad story. So um, I was at a funeral the day at, uh, that everything dropped. So uh, I had a pretty sad day already. So I got home, just wanted to look at my ad income because at uh, at the time I was making like two, three hundred dollars a day with just ads. Oh. So I was like, let's just get something good going today. And it was all just down by 50%. And then the next day, another 50% down. Jeez. In total, I believe I lost like 80 to 85% of the traffic just overnight. That's insane. And how has the, so as you, as you keep kind of trying to get it back here, are you adding like more informational content to the site and how's that been going? Yeah. So, uh, for the first two months, I just left it alone. I didn't want to touch it. Uh, but right now, uh, I just got done rewriting a lot of the top articles. So, um, most of the articles were pretty old already and my English has been improving over time and just, it's good to use some updating. So I did that. Yeah. And I expanded many of the posts because the competition got uh, much harder to beat. So that's uh, what I was, what I've been doing for around three months now. And uh, right now I'm doing a large content push in mainly informational articles. Okay. And how has the, has you started going back up again? Are you kind of growing a little bit more No, Just No, flat? not seeing anything. No, it's actually a very slow uh, decrease. Damn. So yeah hopefully just get more informational stuff out there and mm -hmm. that's the plan, that's the plan. To, to grow yeah. how are you splitting your time then between so now you've kind of got this and i think it's down 40 to 50k at the minute yeah page true. views and page how much money is that sort of bringing in it's still bringing in around just over 1200 dollars a month so okay i can still get by it pays my rent but uh, in november i started to create a team of writers i had to drop basically all of them i'm still left with two out of the six Yep. So, uh, yeah, it, I can still live off of it, but it's not where I want it to be or where it used to be. Okay. And how are you splitting your time then between this website? It's kind of it did really well. And you, I'm sure you kind of just want to get that back and you want to get it back up again. But yeah. are you, how much like articles are you posting on it versus your other four websites now? So the Dutch sites I've been neglecting for a few months now. Uh, I really don't think they are worth the time. It's just so, not as much potential to scale. No, no, I, I haven't written that many articles. Uh, one is 20 articles, the other, other is 35, I believe. But both are doing below 5,000 page views a month. So I'm not sure if they're going to be worth it. Yeah. And they do rank number one, by the way. So it's just, there's just little search volume. Yeah. So I basically neglect those. And the other two English websites, they are at the, at the back burner right now. It's all about the beauty site. Getting the big one back. Yeah. So in your in your peak months, what were you what were you making? So it was December of twenty twenty nineteen. Was it your biggest month, or was it coming into this Q four oh, October? Was, um, yeah. So in December of twenty nineteen, uh, or maybe we should start at October twenty nineteen. Uh, the site was just under a year old, and it did seven hundred dollars. Then the next month, it uh, went to eighteen hundred dollars, so it's more than doubled. Yep. And December 2019, it was $3,600. So it doubled again. Nice. But that's a, that's crazy growth from essentially a year. You're yeah. doing 3600 a month profit. That's that's pretty nice. And then did it, obviously, I think everyone knows in any kind of advertising-based income, January, you're going to lose some. Yeah, you're it not went getting from 3600 to $1,200. Yeah. So one so, thing I found out in Q4 of 2019 is that my... Uh, niche when you uh, look it up at trends you can see one huge de uh, increase actually in december and november yeah so when you pair that with the increased ad rates in q4 everything I, just, I was in for a great month great few it. months yeah and then moving in so how did the the 2020 go did it so 2020 was basically a very steady grow except for march and april where COVID hit 
those were pretty poor months. But yeah, in April or sorry, in 2020, everything was steadily growing to the point that in August it did over three thousand dollars a month. Nice. In September, I went to thirty six hundred dollars, so that was my new personal best. Uh, in October, it was at four and a half thousand, and November eight thousand. And wow. then in December, it was near uh, just under 5,000. And that was essentially um, from like the first that was 10, from 15 days. days. Yeah. That's insane. So you would have been in for like a 15,000 sort of dollar month. Yeah, the projections showed around 16,500. Well, that's, yeah. that's insane. But I think that's, you know, in all of these online businesses, there's always it, like no matter what you're in and in dropshipping, Facebook, something can happen. They can turn off your account or your ads just stop doing well or... I moved there's to this something <laughs> yeah and I moved to this because it's like more I thought more passive sustainable but there's always a risk that whenever you're relying on any big platform Google Facebook you mm -hmm. never really own the traffic you don't it's up to them they can switch a button and, and everything goes do you do any were you collecting any emails do you, any email traffic or anything like that on the site no that's my biggest regret I want I've been wanting to build an email list ever since 2019 never got to it so yeah, I'm really regretting that now. It's Are you uh, collecting yeah. emails now or No, still not because right now the focus is really just on improving Get that traffic content. Part. Yeah. That's the yeah. main focus because if the traffic's not coming back, I'm not really sure what I will do with the site. Yeah. So right, right mm -hmm. now or whenever you were even now it was all ad revenue and then Amazon affiliate, do you do yeah. any other affiliate programs on the site at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had two different affiliate programs, um, but they were really, um, they didn't really make up for much money. Yeah. Uh, yeah, usually around $100 uh, for the both of them. So, but it was uh, good to have there because Amazon doesn't really sell that product. And it is a somewhat popular product in my niche. It's just, it doesn't really cost much. And the commissions were nice. I was a 10% commission. Okay. But even then, it still just doesn't make you much money. But it, it was always good to have it there. Yeah, is that just that's just filtered in through a few articles though? It's not yeah. the basis of the site. Yeah, it's just uh, <clears throat> filtered in where it's relevant, and then uh, from the article, I linked to a product page where it had, an, uh, I believe, two different options for them. Okay. Would yeah. you ever think about trying? Is there any other plans to maybe create an info product on the site, or try you know your own product or other affiliates that? Does it, does it scare you about just having Amazon or just having, you know, relying on um, an ad network? Or So the thing is that my site mainly earns from ads. So um, around, I'd say 70% of the income is from ads. Okay. And what's your, when, sorry? On, are you, you're a Zork? I'm on ad thrive right now. Okay. And what sort of yeah. like CPMs do you see or uh, EPMVs or whatever it's called? And... Let me just quickly check. Uh, I believe it was around sixteen dollars. Sixty? Um, oh, uh, no, sixteen. So okay. right now, uh, for the last thirty days, my RPM is twenty. Nice. So that's yeah. that's pretty pretty solid. Yeah, that was that was great, especially with the uh, traffic numbers I was seeing. That uh, made up for quite a lot of money. So I was never really worried about just Amazon as my affiliate network. Yeah. But Amazon, yeah, they do have a reputation of just screwing over their affiliates. Yeah. <laughs> so I. Uh, it's not that I'm worried about it with this site, but it is something I'm taking with me when I'm building new sites. Yeah. Okay. And the new sites that you're building, are they completely different niches? They're just yeah, completely, completely other. different. Yeah. And I would assume when you, this site, you've wrote so much content for it, you obviously have some sort of interest in this niche. Yeah. So it started uh, when I had to pick my first niche, I really didn't know where to, where to start. So yeah. I just took the uh, very simple approach of looking at things in my room. And I just picked three of them where I thought I could write about. Just went to my parents, asked them, Yo, uh, just pick one for me, I'll start. <laughs> and that's how I ended up with my niche. Nice. Yeah, because I think, I mean, I've learned because the website I started in January, I mm -hmm. wrote most of the content in it myself. And I, I don't mind, I enjoy writing it. I, some article types that I don't really like, but... Some of them I can just sit down. I know the stuff off the top of my head. I don't really have to do much research. And it's so easy to write. Whereas mm -hmm. I bought this website on a niche that I, I don't really have any interest in. I don't know much about it. And I sat down and I tried to write like two articles and I'm like, I just can't do this. And I think when you see a lot of people who are, you know, unsuccessful or struggling, I think a lot of it probably comes down to that. Like it, it's oh, hard to write. Yeah. If you don't like the content, 
it's going to be hard to sit down and write, you know, 30 articles mm-hmm. in a month. It's probably not it's, possible. It's undoable, I think. It's, yeah. it's really difficult. I, uh, people uh, often ask me what sort of niche they should go for. Not just people online, but uh, even friends and families, they are interested in starting these sites. I always just tell them, pick something you actually enjoy. Yeah. Don't go after something that you think will make a lot of money or has high uh, RPMs or whatever. Just go with something enjoyable. Yeah, I think once you get the traffic, I think there's always some way to monetize in, in any sort of niche. Obviously, some of them are mm-hmm. probably better than others, but I think yeah, it's going to be much, much easier if you if you actually enjoy you know what you're talking about. Yeah, because I, I think it's much better to have a website that earns about 3000 a month and it's about the topic that you like than to have a website that earns five or 6000 a month and you just have to drag yourself to work every day. 100%. I yeah, would. just just go with lesser money. And you can always take these higher earning niches once you're uh, scaling up and have a team of writers or you can outsource. outsource it. But you have to start with doing this yourself. Yeah. No, I would definitely, definitely agree. So when you're talking about writers there, obviously, I think you said you had a team of six at one point, you're now down to, to two. Mm-hmm. And so where, where do you find them? Where, you, where did you get these guys? Or... <clears throat> so um, one of my friends uh, also has a few websites. And together, we uh, basically decided to just post a uh, an advertisement on ProBlogger. Okay. So for, I believe, 70 or $75, you can place an ad right there. And it's just a sort of job board with many uh, potential writers. Yeah. So we just had the, the ad lasts for two weeks. And we just went through the spreadsheet and just crossed out which ones we thought would be interesting. And then we, I or personally, I did, uh, it, did it this way. And I just sent them a few test articles, see yeah. how, how well they write. And yeah just whittle it down to a few and i ended up with six nice and are they experts in the niche or are they just like no bloggers no they're just writers some yeah. of them have their like writing company uh they they basically just are ghost writers that's what okay. it yeah because yeah. i've i've found kind of when i'm i'm looking I, i've tried iWriter. i can't get mm-hmm. I'm not even getting any articles back on there. Like I've posted oh. quite a few things and no one's even coming back. I don't know why it's just the niche I'm in. People don't want to write about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but Upwork, I find pretty good for my new niche, finding people who are actually kind of experts in the niche or they've got some sort of skill set there. And But there's such a like discrepancy in different writers. Like some people yeah. get and they claim they can do all this stuff and then it's like, it's just so bad what, what they're writing. <laughs> and then some people, it's just amazing and, and they write it, they're quick, they get it out. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's, it's definitely a tough thing to do is hiring you know, the right people to, to get the job done. Yeah, that's, that's really difficult. I, I had, I believe, 40 applications and the vast majority of them are just poor, to put it nicely. They're just yeah. not good. Yeah. Um, and even on Upwork, I, have, I did hire one writer from Upwork recently just to uh, send him over some extra articles if I had some leftover budget. Yeah. And yeah, some are great over there. One guy is writing for me and he's awesome on a very difficult niche, which in which he's not an expert, but he's, he is doing a great job. Yeah. But sometimes you just find people that are just there to uh, make some easy money. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of like managing these writers then, are you, do you have some sort of system to manage articles like are you giving them the keywords that they want to go after and then are you allowing them into your wordpress or you get it through and put it up yourself or what's the sort of process so, um when i had the six writers i had a uh, sort of workflow created in clickup not sure if you're familiar with clickup but never used it oh uh, it's a sort of uh sort of managing software it's uh, it's um uh, sort of comparable to asana or monday okay. or something like that it's yeah. just a very easy thing to just manage your uh, people uh so i had a whole uh, workflow created in there with uh, in which i just had to paste all the available articles with their description every month or week or whenever i want to yeah and all the writers could just assign themselves the articles they want okay so I always told them, uh, I believe I did it every two weeks. So I made sure there was articles for two weeks. And if there's no more articles, it means they kind of have to wait for a few days. And if there are articles, they could just assign themselves. But the, th- the goal was to just go through the whole list in every two weeks, which was always working great. Yeah. No, that's a nice process of just dropping it in and then they can choose their own yeah. topics that they want to write on. Obviously, that's probably better than 
if they're they're kind of going after something that they like to do, it'll make it easier for them. Probably produce better work as well. But... Yeah, so I just had to take, uh, I believe, three or four hours every two weeks to just make a, a list with how I wanted the article to be, the word count, some of the major keywords to touch on. And yeah, it worked like a charm. Awesome. So then in terms of keyword research, how do you go about doing that? What's the using pad tools or just Google or? I'm just using Google. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how much I can say about it because some, uh, I believe income school is really just focusing down on people that see their content. So that's not what I want to do, but I yep. used to uh, just go after their um, alphabet soup, they, they called it. It's basically the auto suggest from Google. Yeah. And that's what I uh, really primarily used. And sometimes I just look at competitors or uh, some of the most obvious questions I can think of myself. Yeah. So basically a little bit of everything, but I never really used any paid tools. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think a lot of the, the stuff I've been doing is is pretty much just, I assume that's what the alphabet soup thing is, just going into Google and ABC. And yeah. It's going just through. how can I make money and then just go ABC, just see what, what comes yeah. up. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing, and then targeting like stuff that has form posts to the main things, or yeah, um, those are the best. Those competitions, so it's yeah, easier to rank for. And then also some stuff I've been doing is just well, I just throw small websites into the, the keyword research tool, mm -hmm. and just looking at what they're ranking for in, in the nation. I've got some good traffic from from them, but you don't use any keyword research at all. Okay, any ped tools or no no not really any pay tools sometimes i use uh, a few of the free ones just to see what competitors are up to but i also don't really want to uh, like steal from the competitors yeah yeah uh, it's, yeah it's just a bit of a moral issue and not on the other on the one hand i really want to make it as large as possible but on the other hand you've got to be so nice about it yeah i think it's hard as well with the i i kind of worry about when i'm outsourcing stuff to to writers like they're probably going to go and end up with a similar list of products or it, it can be like this in certain topics, there's only so much you can write and it's going to be very, very similar. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I, I think there's a lot of, I've found in my niche a lot of stuff where there's just not even questions answered on it or it's usually like Reddit or, or some form in the niche. Um, I'm going after them, but yeah, that, that's interesting. So just to kind of pull it back a bit, when you first started and you were writing them first couple of posts, I'd say that's probably like in the first three months, probably when people give up because they don't see any yeah. traffic. How, how, when did you see your first traffic or like when did you get your first 100 pages <clears throat> in a day? Um, I was actually pretty lucky with my niche because at the time I started it, the competition was really low. So in February of 2019, the site was three months old and I started to see the very first page views. Nice. And in March, uh, I was at 237 organic searches. Nice. And then the next month in April, I was at over 1,000 uh, organic searches. And do you but think that was that, only five months? Do you think that played a big role in you pushing harder and, and keeping going with it? I think, yeah, it definitely played a role. Um, just seeing some, some, some movement, it's really exciting. But I don't think I would have quit if I didn't see it as soon as, I'm, as I saw it. Uh, I really wanted to make it work and it just so happened that it worked out a little bit faster than I initially expected. Yeah. No, because I think like a, a lot of people, I mean, I've seen it over the years, especially like with dropship and if people aren't getting results in 10 days, that's it. They're all, right. it doesn't yeah. work. Whereas this business model is so much, like I think I, I watch a lot of the income school stuff as well. And I think mm -hmm. like, you're not going to make any money until like month six maybe. And then even at that, it's maybe five dollars or, or yeah. whatever. Like that's kind of the guidance, and I think it's probably a good thing getting into to a business like that where it's more slow and steady, and you know, mm -hmm. kind of kind of grows more gradually. But yeah, it's definitely, I imagine, hard for a lot of people to stick with it if they're not getting traffic. And it's so like, you don't know you do work today, but you don't know for yet months whether that work works or not, which is kind of a no, it's, a hard it's concept. Scary. Yeah. Even when I'm starting new websites, I started one in December. And as of now, I don't really see that much happening. And yeah. even I, I still get doubts, like, should I still go after it? Should I sell it? Should I just leave it be? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really difficult. I recently got a comment on one of my YouTube videos and it was someone saying if they should quit because they didn't see any results after four months. Yeah. But that's typical. When I start a new site, um, 
I don't really expect any traffic or money for eight to 12 months. Yeah. That's just, just go a... in it without expectations. And if you see something happening, great. But if don't not, count just on it. Keep working away and let it, let it roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's, it seems to be in this, in this sort of game, that's, that's what you have to do. Um, so yeah, in terms of you were talking there about what, maybe selling some of your websites, did you ever think about selling your big website? Obviously you could probably get a nice, maybe even a six figure. Pad yeah. Out. So, uh, at one point my English beauty site, it could sell for nearly half a million dollars. Yeah. Um, so $8,000 a month, uh, times around 40, uh, multiplier it's yeah. Uh, obviously now I'm angry at myself for not selling it, but, um, uh, yeah, at the time I didn't really see any benefit in it because this was my main and only source of income. So yeah, yeah, I could go for some quick cash, but I preferred to have a steady paycheck every month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now that I'm building more websites, I really want to get into flipping them or selling them off or buying them. Just to yeah, it's it's a whole another part of this business and it should not be forgotten. Yeah, I definitely think because, I mean, a, f- a few of the people I've kind of picked up in the nation following, I don't know if you follow uh, Mushvik, I'm not sure of his second yeah. name, but he does the easy wins and he does a lot of flipping stuff. And I find that side of the model very, very interesting in terms of Me too, yeah. trying to, especially because the, the timeline is so long from building from scratch, mm-hmm. that that's one of the reasons why I, I purchased the website I did is to get in and hopefully, you know, if I can flip that, double it. I think it's much easier to take a website that's probably doing traffic and is a little bit distressed and mm-hmm. double it from 150 to 300 and, and make a five grand profit there yeah. versus growing a site to five grand profit a month. That's going to be a long timeline. Yeah. Yeah. So I personally want to do both. I want to build a few websites that bring in consistent uh, traffic and income. But there really are so many uh, yeah, gems in, in uh, flipping even a website that I, mean, I saw many websites on Flippa or something that are only monetized with something like AdSense. Yeah. You can just easily purchase that site, uh, sw- uh, swap AdSense for Azoic, and you already basically tripled the income and you tripled the factor. So you could buy it, uh, put on Azoic, let it run for a month, and just s- sell it for three times as much. Yeah. No, I think it, it's, it's kind of crazy how how it works in the multiple side of things and it's there's a lot of ways there's a lot of different levers you can pull Mm -hmm. to generate more revenue revenue on a side so yeah is do you have plans are you actively looking to purchase anything at the minute or are you just really focusing on this this one site trying to get it back and then maybe yeah at the moment i'm really focusing on this one main site i'm planning on doing a content push of 30 articles and after that i'm going to focus uh, again on the other two english websites so just so that those aren't forgotten nice i might sell one of these websites um, because it's in a pretty uh, technical niche uh, and me personally i don't really have that much experience in it so i am considering to sell that website but as of now it's not uh, the plan yep but I did have a uh, you know, sort of opportunity. It's a really small website, only four articles, I believe, on it. I could buy it for $100. And I was tempted to buy it and just write for it and have some of my writers write for it and see for how much I can flip it just yeah. to kind of try it, try the waters. So, but yeah, there aren't really any concrete plans of buying larger, uh, yeah, five to $10,000 websites. Not, not yet. Okay, cool. And yeah, I think your, your most recent video, you were talking about your your plans for the future and over the next four years, you want to hit a goal of 50,000 per month on your on your site. So you want to talk a little bit about the plans for that, how you plan to get there and what that yeah, sort of sure. trajectory looks like. Um, so I basically started uh, that plan uh, because I really wanted to diversify after what happened in December. Yep. Uh, it, it was pretty clear to me that Yes, uh, earning 8,000 a month is amazing, but it could be ripped away just in overnight. So I really wanted to diversify. And for me, that means building more websites. So right now I'm planning on producing around 40 articles every month. It's going to be really difficult. And I don't think I will even get to it this month, for example, but it's the goal and it's what I'm shooting for. 
And the plan is to basically scale that up because, uh, well, hopefully my website goes back to its old levels of traffic or at least partially. Yeah. And with the extra money, I can hire more writers and with more writers, I can produce more articles. So the plan is just to reinvest as much back into the business as possible, get yeah. it to grow as large as possible and build as many websites as possible. That's awesome. I think it's, it's such an interesting model of an investment and you kind of i kind of think of it and i'd love to do like a a model to see but you know if an article is costing you 50 dollars mm -hmm. that article if it only it only really needs to make you like a dollar 20 a month total and that'll you know make its money back on the seal and that's yeah. kind of how i think about that obviously it's making money but like a dollar 20 a month on an article shouldn't really be that hard you know that's no that's not, not all, actually I don't, I don't know like how much do you see per let's say per thousand page views on ads on one article. Is that sort of $20? Uh, sorry, the RPMs basically. Yeah, so or, just, so you're yeah, making- Yeah, currently I'm seeing just under $20. So, uh, and that's the average of all my articles. Some bring in a lot more than others, but yeah. Yeah, $20 is an average. And I believe my site is in a niche with relatively low RPMs. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's kind of crazy to think about that over the long term. Obviously it's kind of scary, just, throwing over money for words mm -hmm. but in the lot like compared to investing in stocks or investing in you know even like real estate i look at it and it's like i bought a website for 4500 that's making 150 dollars a month to buy a house that's making 150 dollars a month obviously not a great comparison but one that's making 500 dollars a month mm -hmm. you have to spend like 100 grand so yeah when you compare them to i think it's insane the multiples and stuff that you can get in this in this sort of niche i think it's definitely yeah, possible it's to to scale up to huge huge numbers there's some huge sites out there doing crazy crazy stuff yeah there are many sites that just do six figures a month with just one site yeah it's just it is possible it's good it's not easy i never expect it to be easy but nothing good is <laughs> no exactly so yeah but i mean with the right approach and just dedication i think it is possible yeah no, it's definitely I... one of the easier easier things to do with just 300 dollars for hosting you're good to go yeah there's essentially no there's no risk no. in this business really a couple no, of dollars I mean, a month I mean, 300 you can save that in a month if you're doing your best so yeah and 300 like 300 isn't that, that's for like a year of hosting is it or like uh, i believe that yeah a year a year or two years i'm not sure yeah because like, i think on on some of my sites one of them I'm paying thirty dollars a month. The other I think it's I'm on like name cheap. It's probably terrible hosting, but it's only like five dollars or something. And I just threw it on there yeah, when I got sure. started. Yeah, so, I started with Bluehost was five dollars a month, and yeah, and it worked fine. And the very first year, I yeah, I'm not sure the total amount, but I believe it was like nine or ten thousand dollars on just a three hundred dollar investment and a lot of time invested. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sign me up. Yeah, no, that's that's the way to go, and I think. You know, a lot of people are afraid to invest money, but this is such a great business to get in where there really is no no downside risk other than your time. Yeah. And you can probably set aside two hours a day to, to write an article. How, how, like, So how long roughly would it take you to produce an article? Is that like a full day you're sitting down researching? And... Um, yeah, so for my main website, after two and a half years, I'm pretty uh well known I've, at least i know a lot of the the, st the stuff i'm writing about so for a let's say 2000 word article i could be done in two maybe three hours nice. and that's with extensive research usually it's, it's it takes a little less maybe one and a half hours uh that's so yeah but there's a lot of work that goes uh alongside just writing of course yeah. you have to find the right keywords or the right um, topics to write about Gotta find some nice pictures, uh, all that stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's definitely an interesting interesting model, and yeah, I think we'll we'll wrap it up here. I think that's been a been a fun interview. Um, yeah, it's been been good to talk to you. And if you're watching this and you want to go and check out Jasper, I'll link his channel down below. He's got all of his income reports over there. I find it super super interesting watching watching your channel and uh, you're small right now. You only got like 300 subscribers, so go ahead and get him up. Uh, a few more subscribers and, and help him grow because his content's really really good if you're interested in you know this business model and, and passive income websites and um that sort of stuff so yeah it's been it's been great having you on man and i thought thanks for coming on you guys yeah make thank sure you, you so much <laughs> yeah make sure you like and and subscribe uh we'll see you guys in the next one bye <laughs>